y'all can't smell me, but I smell good. Anyway, let's get on with it. <clears throat> I know some of you out there think that uh, Mr. Anonymous is just a, a figment of uh, my imagination. But I can assure you he is not. And... Alright then, that'd be just fine. <clears throat> I, uh told you guys a few days ago I was reading through a document that uh, Mr. Anonymous put together and uh, I know a lot of you guys <clears throat> there's a lot of people out there that go oh he doesn't have no Mr. Anonymous he doesn't uh, he doesn't have this elusive guy behind him I can assure you that if, if it wasn't for Mr. Anonymous there were a lot of things that I would still be in the abyss about uh, not to mention uh, James Bethel and a number of other great mentors I have. Um, so, a few days ago, I read to you guys a little bit of the document. And this is something that I've got filed on record in Valley County, Nebraska. And I'll even tell you where you can go get it for yourself. It's in Valley County, Nebraska. It was filed on June 14th, 2021 at 2.45 p.m. It's book number 73, pages 567 through 584. Now, I am not going to give this document to you guys. However, if you would like a copy of it, you can go online or call Valley County, Nebraska, and you can ascertain a copy of it. I won't give you the copy of it because I think it would be a great disservice to many people to give it to you. However, I will read it to you, and if you want to type it out as I go along, um, that is your prerogative. I learn best when I read it, write it, speak it into existence and I think a lot of people take paperwork and I'm even guilty of it myself when I was younger take paperwork and believe that you're running off with a silver bullet let me tell you something there is no silver bullet there never has been it's about character honor integrity finding out who you are uh, going through your trials and tribulations and learning from your mistake I know it's a little unfair because the way the system is designed, there's a lot of men out there. Uh, there's an old saying, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely or absolutely corrupts. Um, and there's a lot of truth to that. So you have a lot of these magistrates, ministerial administrators that sit on a bench and have this God complex as though they're better than you are because of the acquired knowledge um, that they have gained. And I'm here to tell you they ain't any better than you. They all have dirt and skeletons in their closets, whether it's mistresses or they're gay and married or whatever the case may be, they drink and drive. I, I know a number of ministerial administrators, the biggest fucking hypocrites, they go out on a Thursday night and play cards with the boys, get drunker than shit, and drive home, and yet have the audacity on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday to sit on the fucking bench and find people guilty of the very fucking thing that they do week in and week out as habitual drunkards. So, just so you know, they're not any better than you. It's time that we fix this fucking country. We do something in this country for the greater good. And uh, it's going to require a selfless act. We're going to have to sacrifice a lot to get this thing, this shit show, back under control and back on the right direction. But if we don't do it, I don't know that there's another generation that will have the ability to do it. All right? And what I mean by that is they've got every last one of your offspring wearing a mask, worshiping the ground that these cretins walk on, thinking that... Uh, the government is here to save them. I'm here to tell you right now that it's not what they're doing. Not anywhere close to it. The honorable men that do go into government don't last very long in a 
den of fucking thieves and a pit full of snakes, all right? There were some honorable men that were in Congress, that were in the legislative branch, and they said as soon as they got there, they realized that they were dancing in hell with the devil, and they didn't want any part of it, and they quickly removed themselves and got out of it, all right? So the knowledge that I bestow upon you guys is very real. It works. It takes a lot of heart, a lot of perseverance. Uh, a fine example of that is our MVP of the month, Von Simpson, who... Uh, busted his ass to have a firm comprehension of what I spoke of and uh, when he went in to dance with the devil he said a prayer before he walked in and the prosecutor gave it everything he had to convince Vaughn that if you don't do what I'm offering you the judge is gonna fry your ass when Vaughn walked out of that building that day he heard the uh, prosecutor say that Vaughn Simpson I hate that fucking man. And it just gave me chills when Juan told me that. We both just chuckled and laughed. Because just for one moment, out of one day of fleecing all those innocent people, one man prevailed. Through triumph, adversity, uh, and a whole lot of courage, he never backed down, not an inch, not a fucking mile. And this man was facing some time. He was facing losing his guns. He was facing losing a lot of shit if it went forward and they didn't see it his way and he never gave an inch not for a fucking second he had belief he had faith and he stuck to his guns no pun intended so we'll continue on memorandum of law and points of authority in support of non-corporate status of vermins all right <clears throat> now this is where we stopped a few days back And I always make good on my word. Sometimes it takes me just a little bit of time, but I do make good on my word. And I told you that I'd read you guys the rest of this document. Not only did I read, will I read you the rest of this document, I also just told you where you can go pick up a few of the pieces of paper that I've ever filed in my life, all right? The Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Rule 52, apply in civil and criminal actions with equal force and effect because criminal is always civil in nature. No civil or criminal causes of action can arise lest there be a contract. See Eads v. Marks, 249, page 2D, 5, uh, 257, 260. There is always a presumption that a contract exists and that the responding party is a corporation under Rule 52, which is the same in all states as in the federal rules. The Texas Corp uh, Court of Appeals Fifth Circuit has ruled on the finding of facts by the court that the failure of an adverse party to deny under oath the allegation that he is incorporated dispenses with the necessity of proof of the fact. Thus, a presumption becomes a finding of fact by the court unless rebutted before trial. Dr. Pepper Co. v. Uh, Crow, 621 SW2D 464, 465, Texas Appellate Court, Waco, 1981, no writ. Plaintiff plea defendant was a corporation. Defendant did not deny by verified pleadings pursuant to TRCP, Texas Revised Code, I'm not sure what the P stands for, 52 and 83, um, that it was not a corporation. Thus, such fact was established. Louisiana Revised Statute, Article 429. Now, I just want to point something out to you guys. It just bothers me to no end that a bunch of adult men and women run around playing imaginary friend and and placating that somehow um, they think that you're a corporation I, that right there is enough to hang them by their testicles from dental floss as far as I'm fucking concerned I mean that's like me hitting them in the fucking teeth with the buttstock of a rifle and going oh you didn't get hit with a rifle no 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 that that was the wind that knocked your fucking teeth out. How far do you think that would really go in a court? But if we're doing presumptions and assumptions, well, I'm here to tell you, it wasn't a rifle. It was the wind, you know? It's just shit like that that really torques me off because this is the type of nonsensical rhetoric and games they're playing. 
Dr. Pepper Co. versus Crow 621 SW2D 464 465. Uh, plaintiff pled defendant was a corporation. Defendant did not deny by a verified pleading pursuant to TRCP 52 and 83 that it was not a corporation. Thus, such fact was established. Louisiana Revised Statute Article 429. Corporations exi uh, existence presumed. Unless affidavit of denial filed before trial. Well, how come we're not presuming that these people are men and women? What the fuck is wrong with this alleged judiciary? Hmm? I mean, it kind of stating the obvious, aren't we? The motherfucker walked into the building. Can't be a corporation because a corporation don't walk, don't breathe, don't talk, don't fucking nothing. Just common sense here, right? We would think, but that's not how this game is set up. A presumption is a rule of law. It's not a rule of law. It's a rule of the fucking legal society. All right. Statutory or judicial by which the finding of a basic fact gives rise to the existence of presumed fact until presumption is rebutted. See Van Wart versus uh, Cook, 557 page 2D uh, 1161 in the commercial law. Okay. Of all states, a presumption means that the uh, trier of fact must find the existence of a fact presumed per Federal Rule Civil Procedure 52, unless and until the evidence is under, uh, introduced, which would support a finding of its non-existence. Okay. <laughs> well, how about we just presume the motherfucker's a man until he shows us otherwise? And when I say he shows us otherwise, perhaps he's... Uh, lesser of a man because he's a fucking coward. I don't know. But just the same, he's a man. We don't have to presume that. That's fucking reality, people. Um, <clears throat> Arizona Revised Statute, Title 47, Section 1201, 31, presumption or presumed, means that the trier of the fact must find the existence of the fact presumed unless and until evidence is introduced, which would support a finding of its non-existence. Thus, these averments, averring as servants, uh, as servants, non-corporate status is averred for the special purpose of rebutting and pre uh, any presumption that as servant is in name is a corporation without regard to how any idiom sonum name is styled or annotated in any complaint or form. Now let's talk about the doctrine of idiom sonum. Under the doctrine of idiom sonum, if it looks the same and it sounds the same, it is the same. But I use two maxims of law to just absolutely destroy judges on the bench. And it is so funny to see their face because they get caught with their pants around their ankle jerking off every time in the middle of the courtroom when I do this shit to them. Okay, there are two maxims. And those maxims make very, very poignant points. Dissimilar things should not be joined. And similar is not same. Now, judge... If you're over here trying to piss on my back and convince me it's raining by a manipulation of the language, let me remind you of this maxim. A twisting of the language is unworthy of a fucking judge. And if you still want to be a persistent little fucking needle dick bastard, let me help you out even further, okay? He who denies principles, there is no fucking dispute. So if you want to keep putting your foot in your mouth, perhaps I'll put this boot up your ass. All right, it's that fucking simple. Now, when you start to learn this stuff, it's easy to become intimidated in there. You got a bunch of gun-toting morons, and with a simple little wink and a, a wave of the nose or a tap of the ear, here comes the fucking gun-toting moron wanting to tase, beat you, or stand next to you and intimidate you. These are all tactics that they use to coerce you into going along to getting along and, and doing what they say. And what I find very interesting about this is I have been in a courtroom hundreds, if not thousands of times at this point. Sometimes just to sit in there and watch the shit show. Other times I have an interest in it. There are times that other people have invited me to go watch the shit show. And I oblige. But one thing I will tell you I have never seen. I have never seen lawyers surrounded by gun-toting morons in an egregious attempt to intimidate them. Ever, ever, 
I have seen lawyers be warned about yelling in the court, but after all, it's semantics and theatrics in that fucking court. It's a, it's a piss poor Perry Mason uh, reproduction, essentially. I've literally had judges on the bench say, you're not going to make a mockery of my court. And I go, a mockery? Fuck. That's what we're in is a mockery. A man's trying to uphold the law and justice and see that it prevails. And you motherfuckers are trying to thwart him six ways from Sunday. A mockery? It's funny that word should even come out of your fucking mouth, you lousy piece of shit. Yeah, I know, my language. Lord forgive me. Anyway, Arizona resides statute, Title 47, Section 120131, presumption and presum- or presumed means that the trier of the fact must find the existence of the fact presumed unless and until evidence is introduced which would support a finding of its non-existence. Thus, these averments Averring as servant's non-corporate status is averred for the special purposes of rebutting any presumption that as a servant in name is a corporation without regard to how any idiom sonum name is styled or annotated in any uh, complaint or form. Federal Rules of Evidence R301 Agreement by acquiescence. Rule 301 of the Federal Rules of Evidence states a presumption imposes on the party against whom it is directed the burden of proof, C 556D, of going forward with evidence to rebut or meet the presumption. When the complaint is lodged by the government for a fine, fee, or a tax, all which are revenue, they are imposed only on corporations. See Colonial Pipe Co. versus Triangle, 421 U.S. 100, 1975. Thus, this instant complaint for the collection of some form of tax must have been lodged against a corporation whose name is similar to my name. This respondent must rebut the presumption that this respondent is the corporation named in the alleged complaint because remember suits can only be brought in like kind it means if we're playing spades we call a spade a spade and a heart a heart we don't mix them up together and commingle them and try and play a, a club for a spade it just don't fucking work that way all right hey darn circus they are that's why i cannot I cannot with them that's right that's right. Bible warns us about mixing with, with different species and shit. And trust me, they are a species unto their own, the little devils. So anyway, let's continue on. By the way, we love you, Malika. This is, um, if respondent is not a corporation, he cannot appear and plead. <clears throat> See West Union Tel- uh, Telephone Company versus Eisler 2 uh, COLO 141 and Greenwood versus Railroad Co. 123 Massachusetts 32 and Foster versus White Cloud 32 Missouri 505 and Hobbitch versus Folger 20 Wall. Uh, at one and Boyce versus Emmy Church 43 MD 359 and Folsom versus Star Union, etc., uh, etc., and Freightline uh, 54 Iowa 490. When a party brought into court by its corporate name, its existence as a corporation is admitted. See Mud Creek uh, Drain Co. versus State of Indiana. 43, Indiana, 157, Johnson versus Gibson, 73, Indiana, and 282, and Ewing versus Robinson, 15, Indiana, 26, and uh, Callender versus uh, Painesville, and Hudson Railroad, 11, Ohio uh, State, 516, and this case was in 1860. Compare Warehouse versus St. Louis Bargain and Rope Co., 47, Alaska, 667. Stating no facts but conclusions only is insufficient. It has been held that where the representative of the railroad corporation is served with process, he may plead in abatement in his own name that the corporation is extinct. See Kelly versus Railroad Co. 2 Flip CC 581 and Calendar versus Painesville Co. 11 Ohio State 516. Inquiry versus Peabody Co. 10 W Virginia 507 and Everts versus uh, Killingsworth 
Co. 20, uh, Connecticut, 447, and Stewart versus Don, 12, Meese, and W, 655, and Stetson versus Thorne, 13. All right. Meets versus West, 149. Where the person is so served with that he may, by plea, deny that he he, she sustains any such relation to the corporation that authorizes the service of process on him or her. C. Kelly versus Railroad Co. 2 Flip CC 581. Now this applies to uh, capuses, what they call warrants. Are you hearing me? Where the person is so served with that he may, by plea, deny that he she sustains any such relation to the corporation that authorizes the service of process on him or her. Well, let me see that warrant. Well, that's definitely not me. I think you're mistaken. Have a nice day. You might want to go find who you're really looking for. Now, if I was you, Sheriff, I'd start with vital records. Uh, maybe go to the Secretary of State. Hell, you might even uh, get a hold of Vital Records in Washington, D.C. You might find that person you're looking for. And I'd be more than happy to help you, but it's going to cost you something. In 1886, the Supreme Court did not grant corporate personhood to any state of the union or federal government, and that this doctrine derives from a mistaken interpretation of a Supreme Court reporter's note, see Santa Clara uh, County versus Southern Pacific Railroad Co. 118 U.S. 394 in 1886. No laws were passed by Congress granting the, that corporations should be treated the same under the Constitution as living, breathing human beings, and none have been passed since then. No court decision, state or federal uh, hold that the corporations were persons instead of artificial persons. The Supreme Court did not rule in Santa Clara County versus uh, Southern Pacific Railroad Company 118 U.S. 394 uh, in 1886. In this case, or in any other case, on the issue of uh, corporate personhood, as a railroad attorney, Saunders and his two colleagues watched, Chief Justice Morrison Remick Wait told the, uh, Delamos and his two colleagues, the attorneys for the opposing party, that the court does not wish to hear argument on the question whether the provisions in the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, which forbid a state to deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protections of the law or laws apply to these corporations. We are of the opinion that it does. This written statement that corporations were persons rather than artificial persons with an equal footing under the Bill of Rights as humans was not a formal ruling of the court, but was reportedly a simple statement by its chief justice recorded by the court recorder. See Vermont Supreme Court, Volume 118 of the United States uh, Reports case uh, adjudged in the Supreme Court at October term 1885 and October term 1886, published in New York in 1886 by Banks and Brothers Publishers and written by J.C. Bancroft Davis, the Supreme Court's reporter. Here is the often expressed understanding uh, from the United States Supreme Court that in common usage, the term sovereign in, statu uh, in status Statutes employing the term person and corporation are ordinarily construed to exclude the sovereign man or woman. Wilson versus Omaha Tribe 442 U.S. 653 667 1979, quoting United States versus Cooper Co uh, Co uh, Corp. 312 U.S. 600 604 in 1941. See also United States versus Mine Workers 330 U.S. 258 275. 1947. U.S. Supreme Court in Luther v. Borden, uh, Borden, 48 U.S. 1, 12 LED 581. The government are but trustees acting under derived authority and have no power to delegate that is, that, delegate what is not delegated to them. But the people, as the original fountain, might take away what they have delegated and entrust to whom they please. The sovereign in every state resides in the people. 
of the state, and they may alter and change their form of government at their own pleasure. That's the importance of self-governing and holding your own court. Now you're showing these people that you mean business, that you have, in fact, changed your form of government. You believe in self-governing. You believe in holding these people accountable. Now, that is something that you do on your own, okay? Although I can lead you to water, I can't make you drink. Well, come to think of it, I could make you drink. I could pack your mouth full of salt and make you so damn thirsty you'd swallow the damn canal. But just the same, my violent days are beyond me, so I believe anyway. Lord, give me strength. There are days I struggle. All right. <clears throat> U.S. Supreme Court in Wilson versus Omaha, Indian Tribe 442, U.S. 653, 667, 1979. In common usage, the term person does not include the sovereign. And statutes employing the word are ordinarily construed to exclude it. Just a couple more pages to go. <sighs> Rebuttal presumptions are, in effect, inferences that in the absence of any con uh, control controverting evidence the jury is required to make and in civil cases to accept as established facts so now we're going to tell the jury hey don't judge the law don't use common sense just do what we tell you to do i know this doesn't make any sense to you guys but let me tell you this is the law well it must be the law the guy's up there in a black dress the, the cross-dressing tranny sitting on the fucking bench told us it's the law Fuck me, we are so fucked. Anyway, 89, uh, People versus Wong Sang Lung. Wong Hung Lo, maybe. No, it's Wong Sang Lung. 3CA, uh, California, 221, 84, page 843. Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition, 1990, page 1267. Rebuttal presumption. In the law of evidence, a presumption which may be rebutted by evidence is otherwise called a disputable presumption. A species of legal presumption which holds good until evidence contrary to it is introduced. Beck versus Kansas City Public Service Co., Missouri, APP 48 SW 2D 213 215. It shifts burden of proof. Uh, Heiner versus uh, Donnan. Donan, 285, U.S. 312, 52SCT, 358, 6, uh, 362, 76, LED 772. It gives particular effect to certain group of facts in absence of further evidence and presumptions provided a prima facie based on the first impression accepted as a, as correct until proven otherwise case, which shifts to defendant the burden to go forward with evidence to contradict or rebut facts presumed. Ghoul versus Boggs, F, uh, Florida case 174 SO 2D 26 and 28. Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition, 1990, page 1185, presumption and inter inference in favor of a particular fact the presumption is a rule of law statutory or judicial by which finding of a basic fact gives rise to uh, existing of presumed fact until presumption is rebutted van wart versus cook oklahoma app appellate court 557 page 2d 1161 and 1163 all legal device which operate in the absence of other proof to require that certain inferences be drawn from the available evidence. Port Terminal and Warehouse Co. versus Johnson, uh, John S. James Co., D.C., uh, Georgia, 92 FRD 100 through 106. Uh, UCC 1-206 uh, presumption. Whenever the Uniform uh, Commercial Code cre uh, creates a presumption with respect to a fact or provides that a fact is presumed, the trier of the fact must find the existence of the fact unless and until evidence is introduced that supports a finding of its non-existence. Um, presumption of Identity. OK, 
Okay, a presumption is an assumption of a fact that the law requires to be made from another fact or group of facts found or otherwise established in the action. A presumption is not evidence. A presumption is either a conclusive presumption or a rebuttable presumption. All uh, punctuations herein is for emphasis, whether in conformity with Stiles' manual or not, all all time is now time with all on a level plane for I am with the divine right to determine words and their meaning now and where required clarified for conveying my intent as I determine my intent best serves his divinely ordained purpose. He purposes for his li uh, live life that lives in I. Where did I lose my ninth page at? Oh, I bet you that was the age of validity. I bet you, I bet you that's why it's not in there. Oh, some bitch. You got short of the page. Sorry, folks. All right. Sworn statement in the style of an affidavit in support of the of averments uh, precedent. Okay. Now, this is a document that uh, is all-encompassing. And uh, if you notice on there, there's a big old toe print on there. So, <clears throat> we'll go through this. I am, I as, I am, in S, one body, soul, spirit, one uh, divinely ordained tres fictin fiscient uh, collegium called by Christian name Derek Chaton one is uh, one in the uh, ancestral lineage in the uh, particular house of Gonzalez styled Derek Chaton Gonzalez on one created in the image of God ordaining that I be one who does sojourn in this temporal realm, and I do asservate that I am not, nor have I ever been, a corporation, fiction of law, fictitious entity, corporate persona, non-entity, legal entity, or a surety for any civ uh, civil tour mortis creating uh, of the uh, creating of the state and. I further asservate that I am that hath created ordains this live life living man of male gender is with grant of dominion grant over the earth and ordained by divine intervention. I do his will as he reveals himself to be and by the grace of God he ordained my American sovereign birth birthright nationality upon the soil with Arizona with its republic in administration by the state of Arizona and I, Derek Chaton Gonzalez, as a surveyor, reserve all rights, remedies, and defenses, waiving none. And I, Derek Chaton Gonzalez, as a surveyor, waive all benefits without God. And I, Derek Chaton Gonzalez, as a surveyor, I bring the land and I reserve the rights to alter, amend, or abolish any part or uh, parcel or portion of this presentment as I deem fit or necessary to alter and amend or abolish without prejudicing any other part or parcel or portion of this presentment. And I, Derek Chaton Gonzalez, as a servant, have not seen any facts or evidence that the above enumerated presentments supported here within, herewith, are not true, correct, complete, without misrepresentation or omission, and I believe none exist. So it just goes into that, and of course we use uh, nationality, Arizonian, domicile, and a state under the kingdom of God. Height is 17.5 hands, weight is 14.3 stones, eyes are brown, hair is brown, DOC, ninth month, 10th day. Uh, 
AD. Oh, I know why. I know why. <laughs> Went from data conception. I was trying to figure out why the why would I have put that? It was data conception. Um, DOC ninth month tenth day 1983. Uh, we could pretty much narrow that down from when my mother visited my uh, biological father on the Air Force Base. Uh, date of birth six month tenth day eight, uh, AD 1984. Address we use a NAC code six uh, Q N S nine P X zero zero one. The reason we use the NAC code is because it's not part of the lot block parcel ID number, or zone improvement project number, and address. But the NAC code will give you with within like five feet of your front door exactly where you're at. So we use the NAC code. Uh, expires June tenth. 2104 so by 2104 I'll probably be expired or sometime before then communication portal Derek Chaton Gonzalez care of uh, O Street um, which is rule route C001 and we just did some different stuff to separate my uh, myself from there but anyway nevertheless a little image of myself Little uh, toe print and fingerprints and all that good stuff to obviously remove the presumption and assumption that somehow I am a corporation, which I think it's a bunch of horse shit. One would ever have to even go through all these hoops, but nevertheless, we're here, so we did it. All right. So that was the document that everybody wanted me to finish reading the other day. And the next document is the license agreement, a license grant deed. Um, I don't know, I'd probably bore you guys reading all this shit, but what the hell. Registration of memorial of outstanding certificate of title in the style of an affidavit. We'll save this uh, license grant deed for another day. Um, it is part of this package. And again, you guys can have access to uh, my files now because you know where they're recorded at. And I'll give you that bit of information right here. It was filed in uh, a recorded, excuse me. There's a difference between file and record. We record on a miscellaneous record or the register of deeds and we file into case uh, case jackets. State of Nebraska Valley County received uh, June 4th, 2021, 245 p.m. page uh, uh, book 73, page 567 through 584. Paula Missile, let me show that to you. There you go. You guys can go uh, pull this document up and when you do it, you'll see that there's general durable power of attorney, notice of corporate denial and non-corporate status, license grant deed, registration memorial outstanding certificate of title, and then there's a memorial of consumer goods, primary use of a 2004 Yamaha YZFR6. And by the way, I already have this case beat, by the way. Um, they don't know it yet, but... What can I say? I'm kind of an asshole. I like to fuck with them a little bit because it'll be funny amping up the public on this case and watching them just wilt like flowers. I want to see what their excuse is for getting rid of it because surely it won't be that Derek, uh, Derek just pulled a fast one on us. We don't know how he did it. Uh, we're going we're gonna to say that it was a technical difficulty. We, we had technical difficulties and somehow the, the evidence got lost off. But... By all means, people, you do have to register your automobiles, and uh, um, taxes are always due. Remember that. Taxes are always due. Yeah, that's, that's, we're going to stick to that. Somebody made an error. Uh, it was an egregious palpable error, and uh, it was a palpable error at law, as a matter of fact. And, 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 and uh, when we put this in the paper, Mr. Gonzalez should still look fucking guilty, all right? Still look guilty. you you got to pay your fucking taxes, and you got to pay to be on the fucking roadways, all right? So whatever we got to do to cover up this shit show, let's make it happen, guys. Um, but how are you going to explain when you're being sued for malicious prosecution? Oh, got you. Told you guys not to fuck with me. 
So let's explain how we're going to do this. This consent decree between Dirk Tong Gonzalez, petitioner, and the commissioner of the Internal Revenue respondent is grounds upon the sua sponte 12b6 determination determined by Louis R. Carluza, DBA, Chief Special Trial Judge. Uh oh, I told you guys. I fucking told you. But you wanted to play with me anyway, you stupid, silly fuckers. Collectively, the parties is made this day, okay, whereas a fair reading of the court's offered order recognizes parties are in agreement, agreeing that when considering whether to dismiss a complaint for failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted, the court takes the allegation in the complaint as true. Thank you so much. U.S. Supreme Court, or excuse me, in the United States Tax Court of Washington, D.C. Thank you guys so much for agreeing with me. <laughs> Agreement. Wherefore, upon petitioner's due consideration, petitioner as executor agrees with the court's finding a uh, sua sponte rule 12b6 determination, taking as true the allegations in petitioner's complaint Petition, the court takes as true that respondent neither issued statutory notice or determination for taxable years 2000 through 2021, or excuse me, it was 2000 through 2019, inclusive nor issued statutory notice of assessment for taxable years 2000 through 2019, inclusive, which statutory notice are necessary prerequisites for respondent invoking the court's jurisdiction to affirm any award. Whether in equity and law awarding respondents retaining accumulation, whether by garnishment, levies, seizures, impoundments, or through un, uh, unsigned, unverified notices to third parties receiving notice that omits includes Part A under Title 26 U.S.C. subsection 6331 and Title 27 CFR Part 70 Chapter 1 BATF summons or mistake, etc., accumulated in tran uh, trans uh, transgressive trusts known as a per, uh, perpetuity or otherwise administered through or by respondent or otherwise per policy statement 215 22 and duration termination and uh, reporting. This consent decree report is with the duration encompassing fiscal years 2000 and terminating, uh, terminating fiscal year 2019 inclusive. Any requirements for a monitor, ergo revenue officer, insolvency officer, or TIGTA special agent, ergo Johnson Paul M. TIGTA, Paul Johnson at TIGTA.tress.gov, uh, as may be addressed at a later date, as may be necessary, and modification or waiver of a decree. No modification of waiver of this consent decree shall be effective absent a court order issued from a court of what? Competent jurisdiction. And duty to support and defend decree named party shall in good faith abide by all of the terms of this consent decree and shall use their best efforts to defend this decree from any legal challenge. Hmm whether by appeal or collateral attack, and entire agreement. This consent decree contains all the agreements, conditions, promises, and covenants among named parties regarding matters set forth in it and supersedes all prior or contemptuous, uh, excuse me, contem contemporaneous agreements, drafts, representatives, and, or understandings, either written or oral, with respect to the subject matter of this uh, present consent decree, and in witness whereof, petitioner incorporates the court's endorsement, endorsing the court's order of dismissal incorporated herein, and the petitioner as ex uh, ex executor executes this consent decree as of the date first written above. And here comes the order. 
order, it is hereby ordered that in this case, respondent is without authority to invoke the jurisdiction of the court of four respondents not having uh, issued neither statutory notice or determination uh, determination for taxable years 2000 through 2019, nor statutory notice of assessments for taxable years 2000 through 2019, and therefore for abiding in the rule against postponement of enjoyment. Respondent shall timely remit all accumulations and dividends accumulated in the derived uh, and derived from petitioner's perpetuities remitted to the petitioner and final determination. The court lacks jurisdiction on the grounds that, one, respondent never issued statutory notices or deficiencies to petitioner for uh, physical years 2000 through 2019 inclusive. Two, respondent never issued statutory notice determinations to petitioner for physical year 2000 through 2019 inclusive. Yep, it's been fun playing with you guys. I can't wait for our next game. It's going to be a good one. Because our next one, I'm going to be the prosecutor. And believe you me. Answering my claim is going to be a real doozy for you, short dick. So anyway, let's move on here. What else can we bestow upon you? For many people, that went over your head, but that's for, uh, that's for the prosecuting attorney who likes to watch my Facebook page. I got a surprise for you. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, with that said... I think I'm shot for the night. I'm still working on your guys' uh, class. I've got everything almost loaded up. Just a few more documents to go, and then I'll send out mass emails for everybody that joined the class. Thanks for joining me on this go-around. As always, thank you, Mr. Anonymous, Malika, James Bethel, so many other of my mentors out there that I don't often mention. You guys are rock stars. None of this is possible without each and every one of you guys. So, with that said, I'm going to drop in, tune out, and uh, finish my work here for this evening. I hope that provided you some valuable insight. Let's see. I hope I shut that off. All right. hope that provided you guys some valuable insight into my world. And uh, our next class is going to be on how you can do the U.S. tax court petition and do a beautiful little consent decree. And uh, if the IRS doesn't have the authority to tax you, <laughs> what say you? Does any court have the ability to tax you? I mean, if all crimes are commercial under 27 uh, CFR 7211, then everything attributes to being a excise tax. So if the IRS, who, who are these lower courts collecting for? They say they're collecting a tax purportedly, but for who? Because the IRS surely doesn't know. And doesn't believe that I owe a tax and furthermore doesn't believe that I'm in their jurisdiction. So who is the lower state court collecting the tax for? Mm. 